good morning everyone today I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make um, how we're gonna make a Thai taco uh, we have this restaurant in Montreal that has some of the best vegan food and it's called Ovid and they serve these tiny little tacos really really good now I went out and I bought some of these tiny little tortilla wraps and we're going to use those because I don't have the taco shells but they're going to be just as good these are the ones that I have we're going to make them and we're going to put them in here and we're going to have them as little delicious bites so uh, if you don't want to use a tortilla shell you would have to get uh, some corn tacos the soft ones and those are the ones that you're going to use if you really want to go even closer to the way they make it but I am going to share how we're going to make this little batch and what they also use is like a radish and carrot marinade like um, a pickled carrot and pickled radish uh, that goes inside this delicious delicious little wrap so we're going to start off with cutting some of my black radish I'm always gonna leave the skin on the black radish number one they're so expensive to buy and to get rid of the black is kind of sinful so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut them you don't want them super thick and you don't want them super thin so we're gonna cut them a nice size try to do this without losing a finger maybe I should have gone the other way and we're gonna julienne them but not thinly you want to be able to yeah let me go this way yeah we're gonna go this way make my life easier so here's the size that I'm cutting them now if you don't have black radish you can use um, a daikon you can use any kind of radish you have that's the size that I'm cutting it and then we're gonna cut them in slivers about that size because when you bite into them you do want to have that little crunch so we're gonna put this aside cut this in half there we go put that aside we're going to cut a few more slices this is good too because we don't want to get rid of that black it's so pretty to look at and we're going to make a pickled radish now when you make it if you've made way too much pickled radish that's okay too just put it in a jar keep it in the fridge and you could always use it in other recipes now I know I should have downstairs I made a kimchi daikon and carrot and it's just a matter to go dig downstairs I wasn't in the mood of digging so I says you know what my carrots are handy my radish is handy I'm just gonna make it from scratch okay so we want to have the length about a maybe two two and a half inch length I'm using yellow and orange so it doesn't matter if you have only orange that's good too so just cut those carrots in half and then we're gonna start cutting them we're gonna just knock those over best bet to do it is cut it in half and then maybe half again and then you want to cut them like so they don't have to be precise they don't have to be exact but you want to be able to feel it under your teeth when you take a bite of those little tacos we're also going to be making like a Thai uh, peanut sauce so we're going to start off just with the vegetables first because it's a very simple wrap here we go and for those who tried my relish and came back to tell me you loved it thank you so much it really is a nice fresh relish that you could put on any burger hot dog simply simply delicious so thank you for giving it a try and thanks for coming by and letting me know how you enjoyed it okay here we go this really doesn't take long now if you don't want to make it this way you could even 
use one of these tools and just make shreds if you want to do it that way. But the whole idea is to get some of those to get a nice little bite under your teeth. So I'm just going to get a bowl for this. Okay, so uh, I'm keeping mine about the length of my shell. But if you want, you could cut these even in half and make them even smaller. So we're going to just put this in a bowl and continue chopping away. And it's a good idea to do this ahead of time. So if you want to make these tacos, what you could do is maybe make them, um, make your pickle, daikon, and carrots ahead of time. This way it's already nice and made for you. Because you do want them pickled. They're going to get softer and they're going to be simply delicious. And try and make it that they're... You can still take a bite, but you're not chewing on a big piece of carrot. So, julianning them is a good thing. There you go. And remember, if you make way too much, that's okay too, because you could always keep it in the fridge in a jar. Once you pickle this stuff, they're good to stay in the fridge for a long time. So yeah, if you make too much, don't worry about it. Just put it in a jar, and that's good to go for a long time. Remember, vinegar and salt is going to keep everything pickled. It's no different than making or buying pickles. Now, the longer it sits to marinate, the better it is. But because we're making this fresh, I mean, you could do it right away and put it in your food, or like I said, make it the day before. And it's going to be perfect for when you make your little tacos. I wish I had the corn tacos. I don't. You can even make those fresh, guys. One day I'll show you how easy it is even to make fresh tacos. I usually do it all by hand, but maybe one day I'm going to buy myself a taco maker. Oop. But for now, we're going to use tortilla shells. Just as good. And you tell this cutting board has been around a long time. I've had this since I was married. And I've been married for over 40 years, guys. And it's going to be 12 years being vegan this year. Okay, so here we go. And to this, we're going to add a little bit of salt. go and we're going to add a little bit of maple and now we're going to get some white vinegar thank you okay Check it for salt, check it for sweetness, because you do want to add some maple to give us some sweetness. And the vinegar, while well, you just want them to be pickled. So good. That's it. Put this aside. Every once in a while, you're going to mix it. And keep checking it for salt and sweetness. Make it as sweet as you want and make it as salty as you want. I will put a little extra um, salt and maple, not vinegar because I've got plenty of that. Yeah, once they're pickled, you don't even have to add anything else to it. But yeah, I'm not going to add more vinegar. I'm just going to add salt and some maple if I need it. So I'm going to put this aside 
And remember, how much carrots is really up to you. How many, um, how much radish or daikon, again, it's really up to you. It's uh, how you like it. So I'm just going to put this aside for now. Oh yeah, you have to see. I bought a case of these tomatoes. They're not the biggest tomatoes, and they're not cherry tomatoes. They're vine tomatoes. I paid only $15, but I bought a whole case. But they're so good, you could actually taste the salt in the tomato. It is just so, so, so good. I have a whole case of them. Well, not a whole case anymore because we've been eating them. But I do have them in my garage, and they're just... The yummiest, yummiest thing ever. So, remember, every once in a while, give them a toss because you want them crunchy. Yes, a little, still a little wilty, tender. And we're going to cover that. So, we're going to make now a Thai sauce. And we're going to kind of play this by ear. I'm going to keep tasting it till I like it. And then I'll give you an idea what I put. When I say heap, heaping, that's how heaping it looks. I'm going to put one. And if you have extra of this, that's okay too because you could always put it away. So we're going to start off with two heaping tablespoons of peanut butter. And to this, we're going to add some sesame oil. And this is the one I'm using right now. Just pure sesame oil. Get this at my local Asian store. And we're going to put about maybe one tablespoon. We're going to crush your garlic in there. We're going to start off with only half. Where is my garlic paste? You know what's funny? I had this one garlic press one time that broke on me and then I went out and said that's it I'm gonna buy a real good garlic press this way it's gonna last forever I bought one it cost me over $25 and you saw which one I'm talking about because if you've seen some of my older videos I'm always struggling with that one garlic press that's got that green handle I'm always always struggling with it and Finally, the handle snapped on it. Then my daughter says to me, Ma, why don't you try buying, it's like this little rocking uh, garlic press. And you know what? It worked. It works. But I always have a hard time. Should I slide it? Should I rock it? It's just, you know, when you're in a hurry, you just don't have time which way I'm going to rock it or whatever. So I decided I was going to buy myself the cheapest one on the market. This one here. It's supposed to be all stainless steel, but it's the cheapest one. It cost me less than $5. And I tell you that this is the best garlic press I have had to date. Crazy, right? My $25 one, the handle completely detached. This one's all metal. It's also easy to clean because I pop out this little inner tube. And the only problem with this one is you got to kind of guide that piece in when you're doing your stuff. But look at that. It comes out in seconds. I don't have to press hard. Like, who, who would have thought of it? But yeah, my cheapest garlic press is the one that works the best for me. Okay, so that's it. Look how easy that was. Oh, there's my JJ. My little Chi Chi boy. So just keep mixing these and you can even if you want maybe crush some garlic in there. I'm not going to do it because I'm going to leave it just simple as just a carrot daikon pickle. And you can see they're already starting to get soft. See how they're starting to get soft? And the best part is you want them soft where they're bendable. I mean it doesn't have to be that way. Okay. So uh, you want it where they're nice and pliable. If you're in a hurry and they're not pliable, I mean, it's still going to be good to eat. You just want them pickled where the vinegar just kind of soaks into the uh, the carrot and the, uh, the radish. So that's what your goal is. Okay, so to this we're going to add uh, maybe a squeeze. I'm going to put a little squeeze of lime to this. I'm only going to know once I mix this up and see what came out of it. 
So we're going to squeeze to start off with this half a lime. Okay. And we're going to start mixing this up. And remember, if you have way too much of this, that's okay too. Just put it in the fridge in a little jar and you're going to be okay with it. You want a nice sauce because we're going to cook up some tempeh. Yeah, we're going to be adding water to this. Um, if you don't have tempeh at home and you have tofu, you can use tofu. Or you can even use little bits of seitan meat if you have seitan. So it really is up to you how you're going to do it. So I'm going to add some tamari to this or soy sauce. And we're going to use, let me measure it. I'm using a spoon, a kitchen spoon, guys. Okay, so we're going to use one only to start off with. And then remember, if we need more, we'll add it. We're going to add some water to this. And water really is up to you. How one, how thick or how liquidy you want your sauce. Okay, we're going to put some maple. One. About one and a half tablespoons of maple. And that looks good to me. Look at this. Remember, when you put this in the, uh, when you put this inside the fridge, it will thicken up on you. So if you have to, you could even thin it out a little more. So I'm going to taste it now for salt and see if I want some more tamari in it. Lord, is this good. My. Maybe a little extra tamari. Just a little bit. Yeah, another bit of tamari. But remember, guys, taste it. See how you like yours. Then I'm going to put more garlic. I'm going to put a whole clove of garlic. And that's going to marry with all the flavors. And it's going to be even that much more delicious. There we go. So a whole clove. Only half a lime. Now, if you don't have lime and you have lemon, you can use that. I'm going to put some sesame, toasted sesame seeds in here. Yeah, I'm going to put just a little extra water, only because this will get thicker in the fridge. Now, I made a small batch, so this could maybe just be for dinner tonight, but if you want, um, you can double this recipe, it's delicious. And I'm going to put about maybe a tablespoon of sesame seeds. And these are the toasted ones. That's going to be the sauce that's going to go with our little wraps. Mm -hmm. Very good. So there we go. See, unfortunately, when I make these things, I never really measure anything. I just kind of throw things together. So as I make these recipes, you know what? It's a, it's a plus because my daughters get to keep some of the recipes that I make for them. Because otherwise, it would just like die with me. But because of you guys, I'm able to make YouTube videos. There's actually going to be a record of these recipes that I make. And my daughters will always have them. And I don't want to get sad right now, but there you go. When I'm dead and gone, they're going to be able to go back onto YouTube and see how Mama made something. Okay. Perfect. Now this could go in 
My Lord, is it good. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Like I said, if you want, you could double this recipe because it's always good to have in the fridge. And there's nothing in you that can spoil, really. And make sure I get it all. Look at that. See, if I had thrown that in the sink, I would have wasted that much of this delicious sauce. Mm. Now, remember, if you want it even uh, more liquidy, you can do so. But we want it to kind of adhere to the meat, so this way it doesn't run off the um, run off your uh, your wrap. But like I said, if I'm going to put this in the fridge, I might not. I might just leave it on the counter. But if I would put this in the fridge, you would definitely um, might need to add a little extra water to it. It's not salty at all because I'm using tahini. But if you use soy sauce, be careful because it could get salty on you. Beautiful. And I use two heaping tablespoons, and we're talking kitchen spoons, you know, for soups. Two of those of peanut butter. But again, really not hard to make. It's really up to you how you're going to, um, how much of garlic maybe you want to add more garlic go ahead and add more garlic maybe you want it a little more tangy so uh, because what we're going to do is serve these wraps with some lime wedges so before you eat it you're going to squeeze some lime on it but it is so good and this is something that you if you go to Oviv in Montreal do order them they're delicious so I'll see you in a bit when I'm ready to cook up that uh, tempeh and I'll show you what I do to that. And when we put these little buggers together, they're going to be super delicious. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I'm back. Here we go. We have a beautiful tempeh. Okay. Here's our plain tempeh. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut them. Uh, actually, these are already sliced, I think, right? Yeah, it's already cut in slices, which is still okay. Not the end of the world. Still good. It's still going to work. So we've got our tempeh, and we're going to make just a very fast marinade. This is something that my daughter does, which is just a little bit of tamari sauce and a little bit of um, maple, a little bit of water, and it's going to help marinate our tofu and if you uh, our tofu or tempeh but you can use also tofu but if you um, like it plain by all means just grill it up and you're ready to go it's just such a fun thing to eat okay so I'm gonna put a little bit of tamari on this And maybe one and a half. A little bit of maple. And we're going to use just a little bit of water. Maybe extra tamari. Ooh. There we go. We're just going to put just a little bit of water be back there we go and we're just gonna let this sit and it's gonna pick up the flavors every once in a while we're gonna come we're gonna just give it a mix and we're going to uh, grill these up 
and make those beautiful little delicious, delicious tie wraps. But if you really want that authentic taste, like the ones that they make at uh, Ovive, you'd want to use the, uh, the corn taco ones. Okay. So there you go. Uh, what's good about having one of these Tupperwares is that instead of having to open it up and playing around with the food, all you have to do is flip it over and marinate that side of it and wait another half hour, go back, flip it over, and you marinate this side. So we're just going to let this pick up all the flavors and then we're going to come back and we're going to cook up the tempeh and then we're going to make our little Thai wraps. So we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so I am starting to cook my tempeh, and yes guys, I know a lot of people are telling me, why are you using olive oil? Well, we love the taste of olive oil, but guess what? We also use the avocado oil, and uh, this oil is great for cooking because you can actually use high heat without changing uh, the quality of the oil, so the oil stays healthy for you. So yes, we do use all uh, the avocado oil. And that's what I'm using here today to cook our tempeh. And I'm cooking it in my cast iron pan and get it nice and golden. I will also be browning my bread in another pan. So we want this to get nice and golden. And we will be putting, there we go, our shells in this pan. We'll, we'll get them nice and warm and ready to be wrapped. So we're going to cook these and then I'm going to show you how easy it is to put these things together. Okay guys, we're back. I toasted my shells. Uh, so if you want the original one, like the one that Oviv makes, it's a corn taco. Uh, the shell's made out of corn. And because I only have these ones on hand, that's what I'm going to use today. But it's still going to be good, no matter which way we make them. So I have my, I have my beautiful tempeh already made. I'll put that here for you. We have a little bit of cilantro, hot pepper for whoever wants it, and our beautiful uh, Thai peanut sauce that we're going to add to this mixture. Now, you're going to say tacos, Thai style, yes, they're so good. They're really, really good. Trust me when I say you're going to enjoy it. So, we're going to start off with taking a shell. Now, these might be smaller than the... But it's still good. We're going to put a little bit of peanut sauce. And we're going to put two of these. I'm going to put a little extra peanut sauce. There we go. We're going to put a little bit of cilantro. And don't mind my hands. We're going to put some of our pickled carrots and daikon. And that's all it takes. So I'm just going to use a toothpick to hold these for now because I'm going to make a nice little stack. Hopefully it should hold on. Let's see. Can I make them stay in one piece? Maybe not. So I am going to simply just put a toothpick in the middle and hold these in place until I'm ready to serve them. So how simple is this recipe, guys? Peanut sauce, then whoever wants more, of course, they could always use more. A little extra peanut sauce, a little bit of cilantro. This one I'm going to put a, just a little bit of heat because I love my heat. And some pickles. And in this case, we have the pickle, daikon, and carrot. So there you go guys how simple was this recipe and this is one of our favorite things to buy at OV put some heat in this one and remember if you have extra uh, carrots and uh, 
and daikon or radish just put it in a jar and keep it it's going to keep for a long time so you're good to go for a while so how simple is this so i hope you guys like this recipe and i hope you give it a go and if you do you have to come back and you have to let me know how you liked it don't forget guys this is served with some lime wedges and that's how easy it is this could also be a fun party food guys so there you go guys hope you like this recipe and remember if you're gonna give it a try come back let me know how you like it and guess what I'll see you in my next video For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.